We greet all the brethren who are in the church in the Manaíns and here in Brazil, and also abroad with the peace of the Lord Jesus. We are connected with more than 60 points here in Brazil, without even counting uh, other countries. We are connected with England, gathered with the brethren, a group of youth from there, the Church of Kensal Green in London, and also in the Church of Greenwich. And we have a group of youth on the Church of Pimham in the center of England, and on the south, the Church of Bumov. In Spain, we are connected with our brethren in Madrid, Irún, Pamplona, in Granolis. In Italy, we are with the churches, the youths of the church that they are gathered in Milan, Milan participating in the special seminar of the youth. We also connected with our brethren in Portugal. All the youths from the churches of Portugal, they are all gathered there in, on the Manning. Also, have a group of youth in uh, Central America, North America, on Africa, participating with us on this seminar. We are here on the Manning of Domingos Martins with a group of uh, approximately 4,000 youths subdivided in two rooms in the temple here where we are speaking from and also in another temple that we have that we call triplex. We are finishing here a special seminar in which throughout the day the Lord bless, blessed us greatly and the main topic of this seminar has been science and faith. We are at this moment finishing the seminar, transmitting this uh, ending service for this church, a summary here of science and faith. We're going to relay the word for Pastor Jedo T. Gators to proceed. A bread and peace of the Lord. The topic that we're going to tackle here is of, about what we spoke before. We're going to speak to the church, or to the brethren. They are interested on the topic. What was supposed to be deal, dealt with tonight? It is uh, a couple of statements that are going to be made regarding two to a couple of topics with uh, four or five pastors and ushers and deacons that have information that uh, they have a high degree, uh, they are doctorate, uh, post-doctorate, and they will all have a small participation. You know, I want to tell the brethren that a few of them we've had uh, a while ago uh, a conversation and our request was uh, a little bit too demanding. And I spoke with Pastor Alex, I would like to, in a few minutes, each pastor to introduce themselves with their name and their graduation, academic graduation, so that the brethren there are in other locations may therefore understand this work. They will all speak about a specific topic. They met, and I would like to, the, the first pastor, which is, whose pastor Alex, I would like the name to be shown on the projection as was instructed. His Pastor Alex Mora, mathematician. He has doctorate on the area of propagation of wave, electromagnetic, electromagnetic waves. And interesting that I spoke with Pastor Alex regarding this topic. And I said, Alex, I'm very much interested in this topic because the group of science and faith has approached, but in a certain way, we have not gone completely in it. And surely, a uh, brethren from us is here, but is not feeling well, and so he's going to be replaced by one of the other brethren. So, therefore, in first place, I'm going to relay the word to Pastor Alex regarding topics that are going to be approached, which are going to be, I would like to say, they are restricted, we can summarize, and the brethren can pay attention. And what it is interesting for us, especially regarding to the spiritual aspect, 
I would like to relate a word for to our brother Pastor Alex. Well, my brother, in peace of the Lord Jesus. Well, we're going to speak about a couple of topics that have been approached on the group. I'd like to leave as reference here a text on the, on the word to illustrate this. We're going to open in Isaiah, Isaiah 38. Uh, verse 1, which is the experience of King Hezekiah. We're going to speak about the life, the thought, and the limitation of the thought, and how the Lord is above all those things. Uh, God is on the fifth measure. There's an eternal project, and I want to approach this tonight. The text says the following. I'm going to follow all together. In those days, Hezekiah was sick and near death, and Isaiah, the prophet, the son of Amos, went to him and said to him, Thus says the Lord, Set your house in order, for you shall die and not leave. So I would like to begin here with the topic of the thought. We're going to approach other topics later. But throughout the history of man, when we begin to think, and the brain does this, brain thinks that he thinks it thinks so what is the speed of man's thought what is the limit and the weight of our thought so we're going to see here that there is a barrier there is a limit for man but beyond this we who live by grace we who live a, a redemptive work we can walk in the speed of the revelation above science, above all the physical barriers, above everything that is imposed to this action of the Lord. So there was there a warning from the Lord. The Lord from His eternity, He brings an information through the prophet to the life of Ezekiah as a man. It is a miracle. Man cannot be, be able to reach heaven alone, science cannot touch eternity, but through the mercy of God, the Lord pours out His blessing. And there was an information, He gives an information to Hezekiah. He says, set your house in order because you die and you shall not leave. And faced with this information, we could have stayed here on what happens inside of our minds, inside of the mind of each one of us here. We have a brain, small brain, approximately approximately 1.4 kilo, kilograms of a certain cell called neurons. And when Hezekiah receives this stimulation there, this warning, naturally in his temporal life a, a phenomenon happens. And what is happening here inside of our minds here there were uh, chemical reactions, uh, synapses, there are electrical impulses, but it is interesting here how this is happening inside of our brains. There is a friction, there is a barrier. So the speed of the thought, the processing of Hezekiah, with the electrical pulse that go through the neurons to carry the information so that he be able to restore and make a decision. This is related to the creative work. But it's interesting that when Hezekiah, the word says that Hezekiah prays, he turns to the wall. Another phenomenon happens here. When, when he turns to the wall, now he's able to reach. He pleads to the Lord. He cries. He's able to reach eternity. So this is the great gift from God. So we have limits. There's a transmission of information that the brother is going to speak about here. And there was a code there, but Hezekiah was able to reach the revelation from God. No, Pastor, I would like to, I'd like to ask a question. What interrupts in this case, the information. What are the barriers inside of the brain? So, theoretically, what happens in vacuum? A magnetic wave travels at the speed of light. So, if you could create a, a perfect environment, a particle will travel at the speed of light. 
But inside of our mind, what do you have? What is human? You have there a cell. It's like uh, there, there was a resistance. There, uh, the wave will travel inside of the neuron. But in order for, to travel from one neuron to another, there has to be a chemical reaction, a synapsis. It's like a break. So then it would s slow the speed of the information. So why? Because the transmission is going in the speed of man. It's like it's like a break, so that you cannot trans go beyond this speed. Very well, but I would like to continue. When you say this, you are saying the following, that there is a barrier regarding human thought in the transmission of neurons and all of this. And what is the difference between this, between what is the revelation? I want to know with revelation there is this type of barrier. You want to say? Oh, he is going to say it. So we are going to speak about it. You can think, when Isaiah is speaking to, to Hezekiah, you have there an, a transmission in a horizontal, what is human. But when, when Hezekiah begins to pray, that white barrier is like, is like by, by faith to the power of the blood of Jesus, that barrier is removed. So then, his thought is no longer in the speed of man, it's in the speed of light. So faith is what, is what propels things in the speed of light. What is interesting that the speed of light, you can find a revelation when you, on the Psalm 23, Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. Then you go to the New Testament, the shepherd is Jesus. So he goes, the revelation comes before the knowledge. So this speed, so 2,000 years passed between David, the Psalm, and Jesus. And from Jesus to us, two, uh, more 2,000 years, so uh, 4,000 years. There's a dispute that the revelation has that naturally a man cannot go beyond his barriers. Did you, did you understand? Peace to the Lord, my brethren. About this topic here, I have a diagram here that was used in the, on the area of communication. I'd like to introduce first the pastor. Firstly, please put his name there. Pastor, pastor Clinton, Master and Engineer of Control and Automation, the area of Research and Artificial Intelligence. <coughs> so now we can continue. If you now go to the next uh, slide here, we have here the diagram of Shannon. He demonstrates for us a, a chain of communication. Every communication will always depart from a principle in which you have the sender and you have the receiver. So the sender have someone that speaks, that sends the message, and also have the person that receives the message. And every information that when it is transferred, normally it needs a code. So it will be codified in a certain way. So for example, when you speak with another person, the code can be the language that you speak. We are speaking Portuguese. Well, in my case, in English. <laughs> so we have a code, and the code needs to be decoded by who is going to receive the information. Or in other words, if I'm speaking Portuguese or English, whoever listens to me needs to know this language in order to decode, in order to understand the information. Well, now, when we are speaking about Hezekiah, we are speaking about something that came from the eternity. We have heard every day the revelation. Revelation is an information that originated from eternity. It came to our, this time of ours, of the creative work, and through the Holy Spirit. It, it is the interpreter. 
is a Holy Spirit is the one who trans decodified and translates so that we may be able to understand. So man may try to understand the revelation through human reason. Will he be able to understand? Can human reason understand what is eternal? Not at all. That's why many have gotten lost and even the concern of the group of science and faith is to show this, that there is all a science that involves us that governed by the laws of this world, of the creative work of the fourth measure, but the Lord has given us something wonderful, blessed be the name of the Lord, because the Lord has allowed us to enter into the mysteries there are from eternity. And so in the case of Hezekiah, what, what did we have here? From eternity came the word for, to the prophet, the revelation to the prophet. And the prophet brought the prophecy to Hezekiah, to the king. You see, put your house in order because you shall die and not live. And the king could have made many decisions, but since he understood the message, there is only one way for us to enter here. It was through prayer. And in this song that we sing, the a prayer goes where I cannot go. Through prayer, he enters here. He is able to enter into the mysteries of God. He is able to move eternity. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So now, regarding this communication, there is a detail. Like the Pastor Alex mentioned, this communication is horizontal. The communication that happens here on our time in our fourth measure is something that we call noise. Pastor Tassis is going to speak a little more about, this, about noise. But just to illustrate what is noise here in the system of communication. Let me give a simple example of noise. I believe that everyone here tried at one point in time to communicate with someone in a place where there is a lot of noise. So you speak and the person may understand one word and may not understand the other. Or the person may not even understand anything that you're saying. So when man picks up what is eternal and tries to apply his own reason, this noise begins to destroy the message that is coming from eternity. So we have a, a few distortions and noise that operates on this moment in which we're living, the moment of the time called soon. And Pastor Tassizio is going to be speaking a little bit about this. Pastor Tassizio has already been introduced. Is somebody, somebody is important, as you know. He has a word. My brother, peace of the Lord. We'd like to mention here something that is very short objective. I'm sorry. Let, let's do the introduction because we're speaking now to the other churches. So you are not very well known here around the world. Pastor Tassizio Tadis is a doctor in physics, theoretical physics, postdoctor for the University of Forensi in the area of uh, research, mechanical research and statistics. You can say Tarcizio. Well, my brethren, so in this process here that the pastor already introduced, so man receives a code, he decodes it and transmits it. And we see here, the, in the picture here, in yellow uh, of the noise. So it's very common in, in communication to have noise that may interfere on the message, the information that you want to transfer. So today we have a problem. For example, it's very serious in large centers. The quantity of light in the cities ends up preventing the precision in which you are able to observe uh, astronomy observation, it becomes a noise from the city. So bringing to a practical observations in our life, we notice that man is always susceptible to noise. Even man on the Garden of Eden, he heard a noise and man disobeyed the Lord. But in this case here that was mentioned by the pastor, we noticed that the prophet received the message and he relays the message, the message reaches its objective, and so then King Hezekiah prays to the Lord, and it's interesting that the Lord now sends another message to the same prophet. So the first message was the following, 
go and say that he will die. So now the second message is the following. Now go back and say that he will live. So now we see here there was no action of uh, no interfe interference from external noise. So what caused the church to have security on the message that it, it transmits is the operation of the Holy Spirit, not man's will. It's not what comes from man's mind. So possibly you are in the service here in your church. At the end, they're, they're going to share spiritual gifts that didn't come from, uh, from us. It's what the Lord has shown to reach, the, to reach our soul. So the Holy Spirit in the life of the church is the one who he clears up any noise. Is a consultation to the Lord. So when there is a transmission of information that might be a noise, in the work of the Holy Spirit, the pleading for the blood of Jesus, which is the action of the Holy Spirit in the life of the church, causes us to have secure that we are always secure transmitting what is from the, uh, the information that we received from eternity without any noise. Amen. It is important that the speed we're going to see here, an important detail, is that the text says the following. Before the prophet leaves the patio of the palace, so the prophet is still walking there. The creative work uh, it has a limited speed, but our Lord is above all of this. In the, he is going on the speed of life. So he God interrupts the process of death, and he says, go back and say that he will live. So that's why we're leaving our services. People, sometimes they enter, many times they enter with uh, a decree of death upon us. But the Lord comes with his grace and the power of the Lord of Jesus, and he interrupts this process. And at the speed of light, is a revelation. You shall live now. You no longer die. It is the action of the Lord. Is there anything else? Anybody from the group that wants to s say something? Does he have something to say? Want to say something? I'd like to introduce the brother. The youth. I'm graduating in physics. In what university? Uh, Institute Federal of Rio de Janeiro. The aspect that I was that called my attention the most most here was the topic about time because the Lord is the owner of the time the word says that there is time for all things and so the prophet Isaiah there he br brings a word to King Hezekiah Your, his days were numbered but the Lord uh, goes and says once again to the prophet go back and go to King Hezekiah there and bring him another word. So the word speaks on verse 8. Isaiah 38, verse 8. Behold, I will bring to the, the shadow on the sun. So the sun returned 10 degrees on the dial by which it had gone down. So we know that Ahaz was a king that didn't please the Lord in many aspects. So the, uh, the enemy of our souls, he has a project against our salvation. So this project tries to take us away from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord ha has another time. Our lives were numbered to, towards death, but the Lord turns everything, everything around. And the word says that go back 10 degrees. 10 degrees is the equivalent of 10 minutes, 40 minutes. And the Lord has prolonged his life for more 15 years. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In other words, Pastor has a word. Deacon Miguel Faria Lima, Master in Imperial Down Tier, and his pr prothesis, dental pr prothesis, epidemiology, in the area of research and biomaterials, and the University of Minas Gerais. He's a teacher there. So, give a word there, and the afternoon is now interacting with the group of Science and Faith. He speaks of the resource, eternal resource, the immediate that we have. 
in where there is no time for men to think. Where comes the decree of death, he turns to the white wall, which speaks about the pleading for the blood of Jesus. He pleaded to the Lord. He prayed to the Lord and humbled himself. He needed a needed uh, an immediate answer. And soon after, the word says that the Lord heard his prayer and delivered him. So he pleaded, speaking of the eternal resource that we have, which is immediate, comes at the speed of light, lose the speed of eternity, brings the deliverance that we need from the Lord. So it is the life that is in the blood of Jesus. When we give proper worth to the sacrifice of Jesus for us. Very well. You want to say anything else? I want to say the following that we have given, we have approached a couple of topics, gave a couple of uh, topics for this group. We have many topics related to science and faith, and the brethren have seen perfectly the topic regarding Hezekiah. When Jesus says, I'm going to give you a, a few, uh, no, set your house in order. And then he says, I'm going to give you a, a, so many years of life extra years. So Alex has a specialty, and his specialty, you can repeat, uh, is uh, propagation of electromagnetic waves. So a few things are very much related to the voice when the Lord expresses himself in the way in which God expresses himself when he says, there may be light, and there was light. Let us make man according to our image and our likeness. He could have used this resource even from the electromagnetic wave. And I want to say it here as an affirmation, but we are seeing how we need to understand what is necessary at this time. Science, we, we can learn anywhere, but faith, we need to be firm so that we may not be involved on what the world has that we also need. We're not against science, much on the contrary. We live off of science on the fourth measure. But faith is of the fifth measure, which is something else. So my brother, let us bring it to an end. Do you have any other word? I'd like Pastor Alex to finish uh, service glorifying the Lord. And the brethren are going to stand up in the church, the church that met gather with us can also stand up at this moment and to have a prayer and then we're going to sing a song and then apostolic blessing a glorification pastor alex glory to jesus glory to god love father we want to praise you we want to praise your holy name for everything that you have operated on this seminar for your youth for your people for this project of salvation we praise you, Lord, and we raise your name high up. We praise you in the name of Jesus. We're going to sing a song. The group that is on the other room can also sing the same song.
Glory to Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory to Jesus. I'd like to make a statement here. I would like to speak about the diagram that we presented before. We are also here to proclaim that regarding an inflammation that was generated on eternity that the Holy Spirit interpreted to our hearts, which is an information that uh, is a message that came from there, which is Maranatha, the Lord Jesus is returning. That's the message from the church. That's the beginning of the Lord. My brethren, we are bringing this service to this seminar to an end. The Lord give a revelation that tomorrow, actually today, begins the ending. I think that I believe that in ten minutes, the brother, the brother youth, who is an engineer also from the air of satellite, he brought to us a movie about a space station as the ones who want to watch the movie should last about about 20 minutes, right? More or less 20 minutes. Whoever wants to watch it, in about 10 minutes you can come back. I'd like to avoid simply that the bread that were here begin to enter and live like it is a movie theater. If you're not interested, you, you, if you want, you can stay and the remaining can go, go away. But tomorrow, the bread are free to go up after 7.30 in the morning. The breakfast was going to be offered to everyone, was consulted the Lord, the offering the breakfast. And why is that? Because we are having many problems in many cities, not only in the state of Espiritu Santo, but also in Minas Gerais, or even Rio de Janeiro, here in the city of Great, great Victory. We have Vitória, we have information that our cities that have been flooded, and there is a great concern that the brethren may arrive as soon as possible to their homes. But there is also another instruction, don't leave tonight. The trip tonight is not advisable. So the brethren have received the, the instruction, and tomorrow there will be a satellite in the, in the time that we are going to have you, independent of the brethren. The brethren can go home, or if that's the case, uh, this the other Sunday, they are going to uh, retransmit the topic. But uh, the fact is that all the brethren are free to go. We are going to have two classes tomorrow at 7.30, and then we are going to have satellite. But the Lord has liberated the brethren to, so that the brethren may go home earlier with the appropriate care as they go home. Don't go cutting people off and, or with excessive speed because the roads have many problems. There are even many people that are throwing oil to the roads so that people may end up getting involved in an accident so that then they may rob them. So this is information that we received from, from the the lower side of the city uh, and also there is another information there are a few brethren that for sure are not going to be able to return to their homes in certain cities where they got out from there is a location for the brethren to, to stay in Kaya uh, they, will, they will stay there if you like you can even live there <laughs> but we hope that you don't like it because we need the location, but this place will be available even for you to sleep and meals, everything that will be necessary. The Presbytery has the great pleasure to help all the brethren in any need, that, in any circumstance that they might have. We are paying attention to the, the, tra the trip of the brethren. We have operation on our roads here to give attention to our brethren even uh, at least as they go uh, down from this location here. M tomorrow going to give better information regarding the departure for the ones who are going to Villanova and Belo Horizonte and any other city, BR-262. And also have information about the road BR-101. I'd like to give information to the brother tomorrow, putting information on our panels, any observation that might be important. 
So let's bring this, this service with a prayer and apostolic blessing. The instruction from the Lord is that you should not go home tonight. Amen. How many uh, stubborns do we have here? Raise your hand. <laughs> I hope that the brethren uh, obey because it is instruction from the Lord. Maybe you don't know. Maybe stuck on the road because of a, a, a mudslide or a tree that falls and causes some damage. We are blessed because the Lord has blessed us uh, here with this rain that concerns because why because there could be a mudslide and, and follow trees but we have had a blessing that there was a lot of water but our people has been preserved and we are hoping that from this day to tomorrow the bread may glorify the Lord we're gonna have a war a group all together glorifying even around the, the country like everyone to be glorifying the Lord at this moment. You can't shout. <laughs> right to God. Now, let's give uh, the apostolic blessing. Right to Jesus. Right to God. Right to Jesus. Lord Father, I want to praise you and thank you and glorify you because we know that everything is in your hands. You are the, the one who owns everything. You are the Lord of our lives. And surely we are taking care, Lord, of our church, of our brethren. And there will be the deliverance. We praise you, Lord. And your name is say that the saving grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the incomparable and cannot be measured, the love of God, uh, the Father, and the blessing of the Holy Spirit be may be resting upon the entire people of God now and forevermore. Amen. The bread and the peace of the Lord. And you are you, we're free to go, but at eleven o'clock there will be a sounding a sound uh, so that you can calm down. But in ten minutes they're going to play a, a, a small movie about uh, satellites. If anyone desires a prayer, we are making ourselves available. I have to remind the brethren that tomorrow at 10.30, our service, our Sunday school, we're going to be here once again. With more teachings for the part of the Lord, this group of science and faith is a group that the Lord has revealed. Because we need to use what the Lord has given us, the knowledge of, about knowledge and physics, for the benefit of the ones who have faith in the Lord, right? Because on the last century, with the discovery and creation of computer science, all of it had uh, an immense jump. The computer today gave us this means for us to make incredible calculations. And with this, everything that the Lord has given us, all the knowledge regarding science and medicine, physics, all of this is, has become much more clear to the ones who have faith to use science in order to become aware of the power of God. God has not given them science in order for us to contest the power of God. Whoever does not, faith, does not have faith can use science, wants to use science for this. Oh, God did not create the world, it was an explosion, all this, but with faith, in science, we are able to see truly the power of God. Right? So we're going to, in this last few minutes, from this moment forward, we're going to use yet this new tool, this benefit, especially our youth, the adolescents. And they, they learn this in school. The world tries to use this to counteract the teachings of God, but we're going to use, we do have faith, 
we know the power of God to prove scientifically that God exists. Amen. And so I'd like to say peace of the Lord to everyone. We have a meeting with the youth. We are not going to have the video. We are going to play here, but the youth are going to have a, a short meeting soon after the assistance. And to all the peace of the Lord.